This is James Lupton for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to once again be joined with Maurizio Suleiman. Maurizio, good morning. How are you? Good morning, James. I'm very happy to see you once again. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Um, today's call, we're talking about the new weight class, Bridger Weight. Um, first of all, I wanted to ask you um, a response on the uh, or a response from the fans regarding the weight class. How's it been? It has been positive and negative, as with everything in boxing. But a response from yourself to the fans about it. Well, um, I, as in any case, uh, respect everyone's opinion. Uh, the fans are free to have their opinion. The media is free to have their opinion. Our job and responsibility is to manage what we do for boxing. This decision came about uh, many years of uh, petitions from different groups, came about of uh, studying uh, many data, and it has very solid back backing to support the creation of a new division to address a universe of fighters that are in a small heavyweight uh, uh, condition. Uh, the fans, I mean, I try not to read too much uh, when, it's, uh, when they get personal and when it's only a systematic attack. Uh, I, I take it, I don't want any recognition, I don't care. I've seen the NFL commissioner, when he's announced in the Super Bowl, he's booed by all the stadium. And that is our, our position. We're not here to be uh, a celebrity or to be recognized. I just stay and I take all the blame. I take all responsibility. And I'm sure this will prove to be a great move in years to come. Absolutely. This isn't something that you've taken lightly. You know, like you say, it's been years and there's been petitions and it's been a long process for you guys. How pleased are you to introduce this and how, how do you feel it will change the sport? It will, it will create a, a, a good, entertaining uh, level of uh, fights. We're going to have uh, solid men between 200 pounds and 224, which is 16 stone, uh, competing in a, in a very level uh, condition. The cruiserweight uh, was heavily criticized uh, many years ago, and it's been a bridge between the light heavyweights and the heavyweights. But if we go back in numbers and we don't get stuck in the past, in history, the heavyweight champion of the world in 1909, his weight was 168 pounds, Tommy Burns. He was a, a super middleweight. He was a heavyweight champion of the world. And then if we look at the whole 20th century, 85% uh, of the champions weighed in below 224. And in this century, only one WBC champion has weighed underneath 224, which is Deontay Wilder. And he's a great exemption. He's a great champion, great punching power, five years as a champion. And Evander Holyfield was a great heavyweight champion, punching power, fighting against a bigger man. But those are... Uh, two exceptions to the general rule, and we just go by that. Uh, we are excited about it, and we have uh, interest from many uh, fighters, and uh, they understand. When you go in and you have to lose weight to be in a, in a, underneath a division, when you have to give so much advantage uh, to fight in a higher division, that's when you guys... Uh, go out and talk to the fighters and see what the feelings and the truth uh, is. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned Deontay Wilder there, um, the only WBC champion under that weight limit. Um, there's also obviously a lot of talk about Alexander Usyk around about that sort of weight. So they could be two of the biggest names at Bridger Weight. Could this Bridger Weight be as exciting as heavyweight? Uh, please uh, repeat the question. Could, with the likes of Deontay Wilder and potentially Alexander Usyk, looking at that weight category, could bridge weight be as exciting as the heavyweight division? The heavyweight will always be the heavyweight. There's no doubt about it. Uh, there's nothing that can compare to the heavyweight championship of the world. But this is a bridge. Uh, by the way, Bridger weight comes in the inspiration of the kid, Bridger Walker, the kid who saved his little uh, sister from a dog attack. That was inspiration, and it makes sense, the bridge. It's a bridge uh, for fighters that, 
to have a competition in that uh, level field and then they can go up, uh, uh, continue to, you, you cannot develop a, a body uh, and prepare to go into the heavy weights uh, in, a very, in a short period of time. Usyk is a tremendous fighter, one of the best cruiserweights in history. And uh, he's had two fights in heavyweight. And I just leave whoever watched the, the fight, which is sorry, just to reach the, the conclusion. Of course, Usyk mind is in the money that will be generated in a fight with Joshua as he's a mandatory contender. So it's perfectly understandable that his, uh, his mind is set to reach that goal. Uh, Wilder, his mind is set to have the rematch with uh, Fury. So those two fighters, even though they could qualify for Bridger, I don't see them uh, uh, competing in that uh, weight category at this moment. You mentioned the heavyweight division is, you know, they class it as the best, it's the money division where the money is at for the fighters. Is there a worry that there's cruiserweights? You've seen in the past David Hay, Evander Holyfield, Usyk himself. Is there a worry that people may just skip past bridger weight or just disregard it full stop to get to heavyweight? That, that would be okay. Uh, one of the conditions in, in, the, in this concept is that any uh, fighter rated in bridger weight is eligible to fight for the heavyweight. So this is just an uh, area for uh, fighters to compete in that uh, weight uh, uh, scenario, in that area. But it's not a limitation that they cannot fight in heavyweight. Perfect. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, I want to touch on, you mentioned the name, the reason for the name, Bridger Walker, the six-year-old boy who saved his little sister from a dog attack. Um, for yourselves, how nice, actually, is it inspirational? How nice is it to be able to call the weight cats group after this young boy? Well, uh, he's thrilled. Um, uh, he's he's uh, gone through a very difficult time, but he's a champion. I mean, uh, he's had so many uh, surgeries to to help his uh, his tremendous dramatic uh, uh, injuries, and I'm just very happy, very proud. He's a little kid, six year old, and his sister, four year old. Uh, his parents are, uh, they're a beautiful family. And uh, this story came about in the darkest hours of humanity when the pandemic was in a, it had us all locked down with our minds so full of uncertainty and, and care and concern. And that story made, made, made a big impact uh, to understand that we can have success. We can uh, move ahead and we can have heroes that are looking out uh, to us. So I am just uh, very grateful for that story, which touched our heart and inspired us. Absolutely. Um, in terms of rankings for Bridger Weight, I believe throughout the month of November, you guys will be looking at and reaching out to fighters. Um, is it a case of, do you reach out to fighters who fall into that weight category or can fighters apply to you guys to come into this division? Uh, it's a combination where we're talking to all cruiserweights and heavyweights. Uh, and uh, uh, there's also a good universe of fighters that uh, have been calling to see if they can be rated in the division. We're looking at maybe doing 20 fighters rating instead of the 40 that we have in each division. But it's all going, going to depend. Uh, rankings are upon merit and uh, quality. So that's uh, something that will not be changed. And is there a potential date that you guys are looking at when you will be announcing the rankings? Would it be December or are we looking at next December. Week? In December, we're going to have uh, the rankings for Bridger Weight. Fantastic. Um, just a last question on the Bridger Weight top topic. Um, the cruiserweight limit that stays at 200 pounds, there was talk of potentially dropping to 190. Um, it was 190 before the WBC changed it about 10 years ago to 200. Why had that decision to keep it at 200? The decision came uh, to make the transition smoother. Uh, it would be too much complication to rearrange the current cruiserweights to 190. We have a champion, uh, Macabu, who has been competing over 200. 
we have a mandatory challenger uh, waiting for the opportunity. And we have uh, that universe of fighters that would have to be adjusting and then the confusion would be greater. I would be getting more, more hate <laughs> comments. But uh, we are eventually looking into moving it back to 190. When we move it to 200, it's a precise same uh, scenario of what is happening because uh, of the huge increment of size and weight in the heavyweight. That's why we move the cruiserweight to 200. But the idea is in uh, six months, one year, uh, Makabu just called me. He said he's uh, preparing for his title defense at 200, but he's ready to move to 190. That he can do uh, that weight 190. So uh, it's a continuous uh, effort to, to see what uh, is uh, more uh, reasonable but not be uh, unjust to a fighter who has been competing in that way. Fantastic. And I know we're a bit strapped for time, so the last question from me. At the time of recording, there's rumours there may be an announcement for Canelo, Sol Alvarez versus Callum Smith. Just first of all, for the sport of boxing, how big is that fight? Oh, it's a tremendous fight. Uh, uh, Canelo is a fighter that uh, is all around the world considered as the top attraction. And Callum Smith is a tremendous fighter. I am very proud of him. He's a WBC, the diamond champion because of the World Boxing Super Series. He has a tremendous history behind with his family and their fight uh, for autism awareness and just a personal friend. So if that fight takes place, I, I just feel honored and happy and, uh, and excited because that's a great way to close the year for boxing. Is it fights like that that make you proud to be the president of WBC? You know, fights between two great champions. Yes, yes. That, that uh, makes me proud. And, and this is what boxing uh, wants to see. Uh, great fights happen. Absolutely. So we'll leave it there. I know our time stops up. But thank you very much for joining us on Pro Boxing Fans. As always, a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless and uh, look forward for the next one.